guys and welcome back to the acne channel my name is Lavinia Rosanda I am from the YouTube channel Lavinia Rosanda and I post beauty videos regarding makeup and skincare and as someone who has struggled with acne since they were 13 I have gained a lot of experience in testing different products finding different solutions and learning more about my skin and sharing the knowledge I have acquired with all of you so today we will be talking about the different types of acne and how to treat each one individually since if we understand where where that type of acne comes from, the reasons behind it, we can better understand how to treat it and tackle it. So as someone who has struggled with acne for the past seven years, I've definitely experienced many of these different types of acne and have learned how to treat them all. So if you want to learn more about all the different types of acne and how to treat each one, just keep on watching. So let's start talking about the different types of acne. Now you may think, well, acne is acne, isn't it all the same? Well, no, there are actually six different types that I will be discussing today and all of them are actually pretty different. They root from different issues and there's different ways to treat each one. By first discussing the different types, it will make it a lot simpler to then discuss the different treatments and it'll make it easier for you to understand the type of acne you have and how to go about it. So first off, I'm gonna be breaking down the types of acne into two categories inflammatory and non-inflammatory. These are really just the big umbrella terms just to kind of give us some way to categorize the different types. So let's start with non-inflammatory as they're typically more common, easier to treat, and not as serious in general. So first off, blackheads. If you don't know, blackheads are basically a clogged pore that is either clogged by dirt, oil, excess sebum, and the reason it is black is because the tip of the blackhead oxidizes, giving it that black color. Blackheads tend to be very common in teens, in adults, really at any age, and I see them usually in the T-zone, but they can be treated. Products with ingredients such as salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide will probably be your best friend if you're struggling with blackheads. These are my top recommendations for ingredients as these ingredients can go deep within the pore, really exploit everything out, and clean away that blackhead. You can find a bunch of products with salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide over the counter and affordable options too at the drugstore but you can also speak to a dermatologist about getting more of an intense treatment of either tretinoin, Tazerac, or adapalene. These are basically just higher grade ingredients that you can't find over the counter and can maybe combat your blackheads more, but of course speak to your dermatologist about that. My biggest tip though is to make sure that you are not squeezing at your blackheads or trying to extract them yourself. Although it can be very satisfying, I know we've all watched the videos of blackhead extraction and people you know either using their fingers or little tools I would highly recommend not doing these extractions at home or at least trying to withstand from doing this as much as you can whether it's with a pore strip or doing extractions with a tool or your hands all of it can be very damaging to the skin and this is only a temporary solution as they will come back. This can also lead to scarring and breaking of the skin, especially if you are not using their tools properly or if you are not sanitizing them right. Therefore, with all that said, I would leave it to the professionals. If you choose to get extractions done, make sure you're going to see an esthetician or dermatologist who knows what they're doing and will make sure that everything is in control and that you don't get a further infection, scarring, or worsening and breaking the skin. The next type of acne we will be talking about is also a non-inflammatory type, and these are whiteheads. Similar to blackheads, but also different. This is still a clogged pore full of oil, sebum, all of that, but here we have a thin layer of skin covering the head of the comedone. So it's not open, it is closed by this layer of skin. Whiteheads can sometimes be confused for papules or pustules, but these are a little bit different. Whiteheads are not painful and they are not inflamed. That's usually the biggest indicator that it is a whitehead. And these are simply caused by the pore getting clogged, either from cosmetics, skincare products, but they can also be due to genetics or stress, some changes in your sleep schedule or what you're eating. For whiteheads, I also recommend ingredients such as salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, tea tree oil is another great one. I love any skincare product that has a tea tree um, extract in it. Retinoids also work really well. If you find a product with a bit of retinol in it, this will usually work to combat those whiteheads. And of course, for a more intense treatment, always see your dermatologist for a prescription. Moving on to the inflammatory types of acne. Now these, you know, as the name suggests, 
they are inflamed. They are usually bigger or they tend to hurt more. And overall, they are more difficult to treat. First off, we have nodules. If you think of like solid hard lesions that are filled with pus, that is what a nodule is. They do take a lot longer to heal. They can take weeks to months to heal. And they can feel like little pebbles under the skin. I have gotten these before like around my jaw area here and you can just feel them under the skin. They tend to be more on the painful side and as they start to come to the surface they do usually develop into a white head. Next we have pustules which are filled with white pus but they also come with the redness and inflammation. These can be found in clusters you know there's usually a few of them together in the same place and these are mostly caused because of hormonal changes in the body. They can sometimes result in cysts as the infection spreads and they can become a very painful. And then we have papules which are inflamed lesions. These do in fact differ from pustules as these are not filled with pus but they are hard to the touch and they're more of a pinkish color rather than red. Next we have cysts and if you're like me I personally struggled with cysts in my early teenage years and actually a few years ago as well. Cystic acne occurs when the skin becomes plugged with bacteria and dead skin cells and this type of acne tends to occur deeper within the epidermis therefore it's usually very inflammatory and very red in color and can come with a lot of pain as well. And cysts do have a greater tendency to scar and therefore they can be harder to treat. And due to that scarring and affection, you should not be popping these at home. I mean, you shouldn't be popping any pimple at home, but especially with a cyst, since it is deeper within the epidermis, if you do end up popping it, you will just be getting the top pus out and there's still a lot of the sac left within the skin and that can just spread, cause scarring, and really worsen the whole situation and oftentimes another cyst can pop up right beside the one you just attempted to get rid of. So overall I highly recommend not touching your cysts. Do not try to pop them. Please 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 you will thank me later. Now there are a few over-the-counter products you can try for this more severe type of acne such as retinoids and even some salicylic acid products can work for some people. The thing with cystic acne is it's so dependent on hormones, genetics, diet, sleep, all of those things and it's very hard to pinpoint the exact issue and the reason you are getting the cystic acne and therefore it's hard to find a solution. One common solution that is prescription is Accutane, also known as isotretinoin. Basically this is an oral retinoid that has had great success treating this more severe type of acne but it does come with a lot of side effects such as dry skin, chapped lips, joint pain, everything like that. So of course you want to talk to your dermatologist or doctor before starting something like this and see if it's actually right for you. There are also treatments such as light therapy. I have done both professional and at-home treatments and it has actually worked really well for me. I personally got professional laser treatment. That worked great at helping me with that deep cystic acne. I did a combination of red and blue light. Blue light kills the acne bacteria and red light helps with the scarring and healing of the skin. All in all though, acne isn't easy to treat and it's sometimes hard to find the root problem behind it and although there are some methods to treat it, it can be a long and hard process to find what will work for you. I hope some of the tips I gave in this video helped but I just want to mention that if you are struggling with acne I completely understand how you feel and although I am in a different mindset now than I was a few years ago now I know that my acne does not define me, my skin does not define me and the fact that acne is very normal and experienced by so many people that is not something I knew back when I was 13, 14, 15. Back then, I definitely thought I was like the only person going through this, that I would never find a solution, and I really felt like my acne controlled my life. So although it took me a really long time to realize that, I hope that you know and you remember that you are beautiful with or without acne and that your acne does not define you in any way, shape, or form. Before I close out this video, I do want to talk about one last type of acne that's not actually acne but can actually be mistaken for acne a lot of times and that is fungal acne which is not actually acne so basically fungal acne if you feel like you have it you usually know if none of those other salicylic acid benzoyl peroxide retinoids are working for you it's not going to be like a hard large cyst it's more on the surface you definitely want to be discussing this with your dermatologist if you think you have fungal acne and basically it's caused by an overgrowth of yeast on the skin and within the hair fall so basically to get rid of this issue you would have to use an antifungal product and there you have it that's all the different types of acne and how to treat each one I really
really hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the acne channel and also go ahead and turn on our post notifications so you don't miss out on any future upload if you want to see more of me you can find me at Lavinia Rosanda on YouTube TikTok and Instagram I would love to see you there but anyways I hope you're having a fantastic day or night whenever you're watching and we'll see you in the next one bye